what i believe is that we are probably living in the best of the times as far as the growth of this sector is concerned so while on one hand we see the spike in demand that is continuously happening on the other end we see a lots of favorable policy related impetus that has been provided by the government i think and maybe in terms of making india programs startup india programs digital india programs and i think it has further helped uh, uh, it has been further helped by the ease of doing business ranking improvement that we had in the recent past now uh, i would like to start with this uh, uh, ease of doing business uh, ranking impact uh, itself and probably i would request uh, all members of the panel to have their views on this particular aspect and we can start with uh, mr gulbahar so mr gulbahar we have seen a massive jump in the business friendliness uh, part uh, in the country in the last few months how do you see the impact happening and i would put it both ways the impact that probably has already happened or do you see any impact and how do you see the ranking improvement would impact the growth of manufacturing and uh, electronics manufacturing in the country going forward um so first of all if uh, you know if you look at uh, the ranking which has improved uh, the confidence in the industry and also if you look at how people are looking at india not only the companies uh, who are working in india also the investors outside the overall confidence has gone up with the improvement of rankings at the same time if you look if you uh, look at the situation at the ground level uh, i personally see a lot of improvement uh, are we there no there are a few uh, you know places where we really need to uh, accelerate uh, the process and especially when it comes to skill because uh, one is ease of doing business the second is uh what are the capabilities and infrastructure which is available to further accelerate the growth of manufacturing in india so i think it's a right start it's a very positive start and it's helping the confidence of the industry if we augment it with skill development and infrastructure development at a rapid pace i think uh, the growth that we are witnessing today in india market could accelerate further what we believe is that uh, in the last uh, one decade there has been a uh, very good shift in uh, the government policies understanding of the things and ease of doing business uh, the company where i represent uh, we have put up 10 new plants in the last 10 years and with a investment of close to around 1000 crores and uh, what we believe is that the industry should have the uh, conviction that we can, we can make good products we should not be dependent upon the other countries to uh, import things as we have seen in the last 5 uh, years the kind of products what we are manufacturing and the kind of confidence the other foreign companies have shown in us that we have a good uh, skilled manpower other than the skill we are working on the self development rather than the skill development because if you if you give a skill of a uh, driving to a driver and 5 years down the line you don't have a drivers because the driverless car would be there so the self development is more important than the skill development and i think the it's the right time as uh, uh, some of the earlier uh, speakers also have said that this decade belongs to india and we should prove to the world that we are the best in the world great thank you sir basim rajiv ji what's your point of view on this ah uh, thank you anurag ah uh, thanks for giving this opportunity to me to talk about this so uh, like i belong to a company called tejas networks which is uh, focused on doing lot of r&d in country and doing uh, hardcore manufacturing in the country for telecom products so uh, and we are today rated amongst the top 10 uh, best telecom product companies in the world and in india we carry the highest market share so uh, we are very excited that india has improved this rank of in ease of doing business but uh if i look from a person who is involved in so many activities on day to day front i think whatever we have achieved was very simple the next phase of uh, improvement needs drastic changes within uh, indian conditions and the way we do business uh let me harp on on few points see uh, as uh, uh, my friend anil ji Uh, talked about that in last few years government has launched many progressive policies which have helped the industry 
Uh, I want to echo the same feeling. Yes, a lot of good policies have got launched. But I also want to share with all of you that uh, though policies have been launched, but implementation of these policies is still uh, requiring a lot of focus and a lot of attention of senior officials of Government of India so that we get fruits of these uh, initiatives which have been taken. Now, let me give you an example. Uh, the policy which supported the highest amount of domestic manufacturing in last, I would say, uh, five years was preferred market access. Preferred market access policy was uh, uh, launched which talked about that we should promote uh, Make in India and we should come out with uh, uh, products which are designed and manufactured here in India. So many companies have invested in this and today, believe me, we have the best products which can compete the best in the world. But still, the policies are, uh, uh, need to get that laser uh, cutting edge so that wherever there is an opportunity where government investing in huge amount, domestic products are preferred. Uh, let me give you an example. There is a project called Bharatnet. Bharatnet is a uh, uh, massive project which is basically connecting all the gram panchayats, all the villages of the country on internet. It's, it's the prime project for Digital India. Now, when this project is getting implemented in states, uh, and states are playing very key role in implementing these projects, and today, what domestic industry or Indian manufacturers are struggling with is how do we just be part of these uh, uh, tenders, and we should get an opportunity to compete. So, uh, my uh, suggestion is that we have come to a level where we have started talking of Make in India, we have started talking of R&D in India. Uh, our Secretary Saab in the first session, he said we should be focusing on design-led manufacturing today. So there are organizations who are doing that. But the policy support for hand-holding these organizations to get a lot of orders so that they scale and they can further invest in next phase of R&D is very important. So that was one of the key points I wanted to highlight. Oh, great. That's insightful. In fact, I was going to talk about PMA, but I think you have already mentioned uh, the details on that. Uh, thanks. Uh, Swati, uh, what's your take on the entire EODB thing and its impact that we are seeing or we will be seeing in future? So, Anurag, thank you. Um, um, yeah, so, you know, there is an immense amount of policy taking from what Rajiv said. There's an immense amount of policy initiatives that has happened. And I'm just so glad to see a government that is, you know, pushing so hard and very serious about uh, their commitments. Um, ease of doing business actually comes in many ways post-policy, yeah. right? So now we are talking about an environment where post-policy, we review the policies to look at certain tweaks and amendments to just make it so much easier. A uh, little bit about my company and then I'll tell you what, where our pain points lie. So Starlight Technologies is in the optical fiber space. We are into 100 countries. We are probably the top three in the world in terms of scale of manufacturing and I've got about 160 plus patents. Uh, so design-led R&D and uh, manufacturing for scale and quality is very critical for us. Another aspect that's very critical is time to market. And uh, there is scale and time to market. These two things are very important given that in this five years, uh, uh, products related to telecom infrastructure is critical not only in India but across the world. Everywhere there is transformation happening. So India has a huge, huge opportunity and India can become a fiber capital to the world. Policy initiatives related to ease of doing business actually goes down to just enhancing policies around MSIPs, enhancing policies around, uh, uh, you know, and let me actually touch a little bit about MSIPs. Um, it's the policy is in place, but the complexities are huge, right? So we have, uh, you know, when we, uh, 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 just getting an approval sometimes in, in an MSIP takes more than uh, uh, a quarter uh, and far more sometimes. So, I mean, just think about it. Ease of doing business lies in on-time approvals within 60 days, 
post approval, ensuring the payments come within an extremely short period of time, and the drudgery of the paperwork that goes behind MSIPS is pretty significant. So how can we reduce that? So the policymakers are hard on trying to make things easy, and as an industry, we've got to almost you know, bring it down to operationally how we can make it easy for the industry. So I'd like to uh, drive in the point that for this industry to survive, all opportunities to ease the, the way of you know, doing business as far as manufacturing is concerned uh, is one. Second, ensuring that the payments which the industry should ideally enjoy from the government, incentives from the government, in the form of payments should happen on time so that there is a predictable cash flow to invest back into the, in, uh, to, to, to the manufacturing. And third is to ensure that all paperwork related to the incentives that the government is giving is far reduced so that the concentration of the companies is actually in, 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 in quality manufacturing and less around the regulatory matters that are there. So less prescriptive policies, more flexibility in the policy so that it's more outcome based versus, you know, let's get 10 cameras and 15 uh, products of a certain type. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So uh, that's, that's where I am. MSIPs, uh, less paperwork, uh, right across all policy initiatives and huge focus in these uh, five years towards manufacturing. They should just open the doors as far as policy is concerned right now. We are very confident as an industry. And the payments part that you oh, mentioned. Payments <laughs> is right there. We get the money, we are able to invest back. Right? So that's Thanks, Thanks Thank Swati. That was, that was really insightful. Uh, yes, to some extent, uh, I would not say, uh, rather I would say that, yes, there are policy interventions that have been done by government to a large extent. And since Swati talked about MSIP, so uh, lots of good things have been done. But yes, to some extent, I think we still need to move uh, a step ahead uh, to reach where the industry wants us to move. But, but I think one more thing which is very important, Swati, is that an equal participation from the industry side is also required. So in terms of uh, how the industry interacts with the government, the, the ways, the, the entire I would say the communication channel between the industry and the government. So that's also something which is very important because while government will keep doing things and there would be always some so-called government steps that would be involved in the execution of those policies. I think, uh, but an equal participation, uh, a feedback type of mechanism from the industry, those things are also important for such schemes to, to succeed and for us to reach where we would want to reach. I'd like to actually add to that. You're so right. So if the government could create formal mechanisms of smarter, easier ways of collaborating. Yeah. And what I mean by that is I think the industry is today at a stage where we are very confident we want to invest significantly. I know Starlight is going to be investing 12 billion more uh, into increasing capacity. Am I right, Pankaj? Well, he's, he's the one who holds the numbers. That's uh, Pankaj Agarwal, who is uh, a financial controller. And uh, he is, uh, uh, you know, uh, handling a lot of the uh, investments uh, that we are going to be doing. So we are increasing capacity in a big way. I know Tejas and I think the entire panel out here is pushing towards increasing investments. I think confidence of the industry couldn't be better. Yeah. And we are at that. We are, we are ready to propel now. And therefore, now we, we are reaching out our hands. We, want, we, we know the uh, government is doing the same. Uh, we just need to like tweak a little here and there to just make it easier. So ease of doing business, top priority. Great. I think you wanted yeah. to add something. Uh, Anurag, I uh, want to just add to what Swati said and you initiated the payments. I think next criteria of ease of doing business should be a mandate given to all the tendering agencies that within a time period, payment for domestic industry has to be made. Today, the situation is that, yes, there are huge opportunities, uh, people are working towards it, but the cash flow of domestic industry gets totally messed up because payments take a lot of time to come. I also want to highlight a difference which exists between domestic manufacturers and importers. Somehow our policies give uh, LC uh, to foreign manufacturers so that as soon as they ship or they meet certain criteria, their payment is made. 
whereas for domestic manufacturers since the payment is in rupees they there are milestones which can never be achieved and even if they are achieved getting payment is a mammoth task so if uh, out of this debate we can list down this point on payment collections uh, for domestic industry yeah. that will be a huge achievement and by the way, UK and Australia have got these brilliant policies around uh, 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 government payments. So government payments is an issue across the world. And they have some uh, 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 great stuff. I'd like, to, in fact, the audience to know that, you know, they, uh, I'm not sure if it is UK or Australia, but one of them has decided that, you know, all undisputed payments within five days uh, should be done digitally. Um, and then after that, uh, if there is at all any disputed that is left, it should be done within a uh, you know, stipulated period of time, beyond which there is going to be huge interests that are uh, 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 you know, added. So what happens is the accountability within the government also increases, and with the support of technology, like a single window clearance for government payments yeah. would be a brilliant place to go. And we have the best service industry in the entire world sitting here. So probably one of our uh, you know, big companies here should just be working on government payments and making life easy for all of us. So Anurag, you rightly touched upon that, you know, there are improvements and there will be improvements and you are absolutely right. As human beings, yet they'll mange more. So always, whatever happens, we need more. And very rightly, uh, the panelists have said that payment is one of the bigger issues and, you know, if we get the money back from the government on time, we will be able to invest more. I just want to highlight uh, only one single point here is... Uh, with ease of doing business and the ground reality that uh, we are hearing for some time. Uh, one of the things that has happened and today I was going through the newspaper and there was an uh, article saying uh, a by 2022, uh, I don't know whether it's, I'm right or 2022 or 2025, we will have the next highest billionaires in the world after China. So we will be much ahead of uh, a US, a Japan and all those things. That means there is a wealth creation which is happening in the country. Now, one is government, second is how as an industry we can create a pool wherein we can use that wealth for improving the manufacturing setup in India and helping the consumers get better options within the country. So that's also something which I, which I believe if we can come together and see uh, beyond government this is something that all the partners and the industry can see and leverage the wealth which is being created within the country. Great. Thanks, thanks. Uh, Mr. Ramchandran, I, I was seeing your presentation and you did mention about uh, ease of doing business. Uh, so, how, how do you want to further elaborate what's what? Yeah, you see, the fact that uh, a park of the size of our, uh, the, a park of our size, which is about 7,500 acres, could be set up and run successfully. Uh, with active uh, cooperation both from state and from central government itself proves that the ease of business has improved significantly. Oh, that's, that's so good to hear, yeah. yeah. So we have about 170 companies and all of them are large multinationals as well as uh, Indian companies. So the ease of business specific to electronics, you know, when we set up the EMC, you know, we worked with uh, MATE. So there was, we saw, you know, we could set it up quite fast because, you know, we had proposals in place, we had things in place. So on that front, obviously, there has been significant improvement terms of working with state government and with central government and I think more in terms also of an attitude to can do and will do from government has come about in the last uh, many years which I think is very which is a very positive trend. Uh, yes we have for our, specifically as MSIP is a bit complicated in that sense in terms of paperwork etc but we have to go with the fact that eventually it will come. <laughs> you know, it has to come and it will come. And uh, so also from our side towards specifically towards the EMC, what we have been trying to do to do ease of, to improve on ease of business is, you know, uh, whether it's a giant uh, electronics company or a very small electronics company, how can we cater to all their requirements, whether with, you know, land or with, uh, you know, specific small, uh, you know, ready-built factory. So trying to do that, trying to build up incubator centers and some of the initiatives which are done. And, and in all of this, both from state and from center, we've seen the response and the reception has been fantastic. So I would say there's been tremendous improvement in that area. Great. Thanks. Thanks, Mr. Ramachandran. Uh, Mr. Gulbahar, coming back to you, uh, since you come more from the marketing side uh, of the business, I'm always intrigued by one of these facts. Uh, 
when we talk about domestic electronics ma manufacturing, so while one of the consumers would be the government and, and similar bodies, a large ecosystem will be driven by the consumer demand. And consumers will typically not differentiate between what is being manufactured in India and what is being manufactured in some other country. Yes. So how does this entire puzzle work? Uh, how, how, what is the impact does it play, the consumer demand side, in, in the, from, from a growth perspective? Sure. So I think, uh, as you rightly said, the consumer is not bothered whether it is being manufactured in India or being outside. The consumer is looking at the value that he is getting out of the product, right? And that's why it is important to understand the consumer first. And when I say it is important to con uh, understand the consumer first, if you look at uh, the current trends, and I will take example of a small category that we play in, uh, that is kitchen appliances. Mm -hmm. And if you look at the kitchens, the kitchens have evolved, right? It's no more the same kitchens as we used to see 10 years back or 20 years back. They are almost like a part of the home today. Earlier, it used to be an isolated unit. Now, it's, it's almost the part of the home today and that opens up plethora of opportunities from installed kitchen appliances to more modern compact kitchen appliances and that's where the consumer is coming from. The consumer is not looking at whether that is manufactured in India or it's manufactured in outside. What the consumer is looking at is the design, it's the quality and it's the value addition that it, it, is, it is bringing. The good part for the industry is the consumer is ready to upgrade. And I was talking about a category like kitchen appliances. If I look at uh, the first purchase and the second purchase, the second purchase is higher than the first purchase. That means uh, there is a lot of upgrade which is happening and that's a very positive sign for us. So uh, if we invest today and uh, at Philips, um, you know, in kitchen, almost 80% of our manufacturing is local. And that's what we invested few years back and today it is paying off. And that's what the consumer is saying. Understand the needs and inside and give me solutions which add value and eases my life. Manufacturing, they are not actually concerned. So they really don't, and that's my personal observation, I could be completely wrong, but uh, I don't see consumers looking at made in India or made in Europe or something like that. What they look at is, is the solution or the product that I am getting is adding value. Thanks, sir. Thanks. This, this helps, at least this helps me a lot. <clears throat> uh, Mr. Basin, uh, uh, I think one of the important points that, that we talk about in the industry is the backward integration point. So while we see a lot of surge from a demand perspective and the surge that we are seeing from a growth in the, from a manufacturing side also, so how do you see the backward integration working out in the currently as of now? And how important do you think that that piece plays a role in the overall value chain and the overall, uh, I would say, growth of the industry when we talk about ESDM as an overall industry? Anurag, that has been the bigger challenge. Like uh, the company I represent, Havels, we did a turnover of close to around 7,000 crore uh, last year. And we have got 10 plants. We have a Baddi plant, we have Nimrana, we have Alwar, we have Hardwar. All these plants are set up in the new areas where they are. The major problem is the uh, raw material components. And in electronics, whatever you are saying, what we talk about LED, what we talk about the chips, what we talk about the components, I'll, let me just share you, more than 50% of the components are still imported from China. And that is the biggest challenge for us because there is no ancillary units, those who can give us the quality material. Because in electronics, the customer is relying on the overall product, not on the component. If even one component out of the 50 component in a product fail, we had a huge failure rate in the LED street light because LED, uh, you can say it very easy, uh, but when you are using into the street light under the uh, extreme uh, condition, weather condition, what we have, winds, uh, rains, and the summers, and the extreme conditions, the, each component uh, is uh, very, very important. And we should learn from Japan that the quality should be given the most priority. And one more thing which I would like to share with this kind of the senior uh, leadership which is here, is uh, during this conference, what I have felt is there is a trust between the government and the employee, uh, uh, industry. Who, who, why should we blame government? Government people are those people, those who are sitting here. Are the similar people, those who sit in the same locality and eat the same thing, what we do it. The kind of the connect what we have to make between the senior leadership of the government and we as a senior leader is to be made. 
and one of the senior officials said that you blame government that uh, uh, even the senior officer at my level also I don't know much of the government policies which are there. We should get connected so that we should get convinced that whatever we as a com country are doing is thing. Then only we will get convinced. Conviction is very, very important for manufacturing. Otherwise, what he has said is that for a customer, it doesn't matter what he is getting. But on a lighter side, I would like to tell you, on a birthday, when the mother makes the cake with her own hands, that makes the difference rather than getting a cake which you get it from the bakery for only sending a WhatsApp, not merely for eating. So made in India has to be the major theme for us that we should manufacture in India and sell in India and export in India. I was reading through one of the uh, automobile company, I will not name the company, you can go through the checkup. 10, 15 years down the line, the export was only less than 5%. And now, the export is more than 40%. So for exporting the product, you need to have a quality. You can, you can export to Sri Lanka, Bangladesh or uh, Nepal, uh, a product which is not of that quality, but if you are exporting to US or in Europe or in Japan, you need to work on the quality. And for quality, we should have the entire integration, backward integration, so that the customer, which whatever he gets a product, should have a confidence on the uh, brand, uh, that this brand which I have bought has the con uh, product which is of good quality. by Varun that I should finish by 12.30, uh, but I'll still take the liberty, uh, Varun, wherever you are, I'm sorry, I'll just take probably 15 more minutes. Uh, just couple, two more things which I wanted to understand and I'm sure the audience will also get benefited by the views of the panel. One is on the skill availability side. Now, this sector being a very skill intensive sector, so probably Rajiv ji, if you want to take this up, how do you see the supply of skills, uh, the manpower skills uh, and do you see it impacting it in either ways, in a positive way or in a negative way? And a subsequent thing, now I'm sort of uh, uh, asking both these questions together to save some time. Lots of, uh, you must have seen the sector skill councils and all those things. So how, what is the role that you see they're actually playing and is it actually being seen on the ground, benefits are being uh, seen on the ground or not from an industry perspective? Excellent question, Arag. <coughs> uh, I think this is uh, one of the very important questions which we all need to understand and answer. So uh, if we look at the vision of Government of India, the vision of Government of India is design and make in India, right? Now if, you, if we divide this uh, vision in two parts, first is design and second is make in India. For design, you need a very strong R&D setup to be present in the country. And if we go back, uh, let's say 10, 10 years or uh, starting from year 2000, uh, Indian government has given very strong incentives to our software industry. And today, most of the global electronics manufacturers, they have their R&D units set up in India. They use our Indian brains to design the products and launch these products worldwide. So we are in a very niche state where we have solid manpower which is available, which is very strong on technology uh, and since electronics require a lot of software and design capabilities, so there is no shortage of uh, human resources on this side, right? We have excellent uh, ability and I think we can be the best worldwide uh, if we focus on this. Second portion is manufacturing. On manufacturing side, I would say yes, we have these skills but there is a lot to be scaled. And there we see uh, uh, organization like Telecom Sector Skill Council who can play a very, very strong role. And I think uh, there is a lot of focus coming in uh, Telecom Sector Skill Council where they are now going to engineering colleges to, uh, 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 and in fact, there is a uh, very recent scheme which is launched by uh, Skill Council of India, which says that if you do a Telecom Sector Skill Council course, and your, uh, uh, that internship will be taken care of. So there are initiatives which are coming up, but there is a lot of gap to be covered. Here I also want to add one more point. See, as I mentioned that, and everyone knows that uh, we gave a lot of tax holidays to our software companies, and today it is more than $100 billion uh, 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 turnover 
a mammoth giant which is available in India, right? And they have built a strong brand. Today, the need of R is that we need to give tax holiday to our product manufacturing sector for, let's say, next five to ten years so that they can invest and build this also as a solid brand for India. So I think these were the points I wanted to add. Thanks, thanks Rajiv. Swati, you wanted to add something. Yeah, so first of all, uh, Rajiv, taking from what you said, uh, these five years are very critical. It's a short five years that can actually go away very fast. So uh, I think it makes sense, uh, uh, you know, the hardcore focus on manufacturing, uh, design-led domestic manufacturing with a significant amount of uh, uh, local content or value addition so that components and uh, ancillary services also get built up. And if we give a tax holiday uh, for this short five years, uh, it will boost both our brand, our quality and value. And therefore, let me also touch upon backward integration. So uh, the optical fiber industry, it actually started for, uh, I mean, for, for various reasons. I mean, the optical fiber industry has worked very hard on the backward integration. So we are one of the only uh, uh, industries uh, in the country, uh, in, in this space of course, uh, that is looking at uh, a value addition, you know, it's literally from silica to optical fiber cable and uh, software, right? End to end, end to end. I mean, my company right now, uh, Starlight Technologies, is I think one of the uh, top three in the world that has got an end to end uh, manufacturing from raw materials, uh, uh, you know, to finished products and uh, software. Why am I putting focus on it? I, I understand the, the, you know, the pain of not having the components in time and, you know, not having an ecosystem uh, which is local. And I also understand the pain of not having the Made in India stamp when it should truly be from inside to outside, right? And, and that's what this industry is right now pushing towards. So when I say we are confident, it, 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 we, the, the industry has the potential of becoming the fiber capital, India can become the fiber capital to the world. So a huge focus on backward integration, local value addition, and, and incentivization, therefore towards that in manufacturing, would make the industry far more confident in, in expressing its quality and control to the world. One more point, and after that I finish, and that is in the optical fiber industry, we, uh, it's important to create semiconductor grade preforms or glass preforms. Why am I saying that? That's the engine uh, of the, the quality uh, of the optical fiber. And therefore, actually inviting companies from across the world to come here and actually uh, incentivizing companies to manufacture that so that we control the value chain and the quality of the value chain is very important. So preform manufacturing is a very, very critical focus if we want to capture the world. Great. Thanks. Thanks, Swati. Yeah, Mr. Last one point I just want to make on the skill development. Uh, India is the youngest economy where uh, more than 50 percent of the population is below 25. And uh, one advice to all senior leaders, those who are sitting here, I have been hearing this word from my parents and my colony that the youth is useless and careless. I would like to correct it. Youth is used less and cared less. Now we should hand over the baton to the youth because the electronics, what we, the people, those who are senior leaders, those who are age 50 plus, they don't understand electronics, what the youth want to understand and we should give out the next five years to the youth to handle the things that they, they want to think and we should not be a road barrier into that, that whatever we know is the best and whatever you know, you are still a bacha, to make a ki kya hota, kya nahi hota. Actually, for the electronics, we have to hand it over because all the senior people sitting here, we internally know how much we know about the iPhones or the smartphones and how much our grandchildren know about the same uh, equipment. So they m know much more on the electronics and their needs are much more what we talk about IoT. I think we should hand over the baton to the youth uh, for the future growth of the country and the industry. Thanks, Thanks Mr. Basin. I think the paucity of time has allowed me to play coffee with Karan, with the panelists. Uh, very quickly, I I'll request everyone starting from Mr. Gulbahar, if uh, you have to just mention two of your topmost, I would say either priorities, your challenges, focus areas or, or probably pain points. 
so anything that you think these are the top of the two things top of the mind things that come to you uh, for the growth of this sector growth of your organization from the government side what would these two be very quickly sure so uh, you know if if we, if we go through the con conversation i am very positive and on two things one we all talked about ease of doing business and the second thing is when we say the consumer is not bothered whether it is made in india or made in europe it's a very positive sign for the industry because gone are the days when imported products were considered to be superior so the cons the government is showing confidence the consumer is showing confidence in manufacturing in india so uh, for me uh, and for our organization the two important things is how we can increase the contribution of local for local manufacturing in our overall portfolio that's priority number 1 the second big priority which is again related to that is how do we develop capabilities or strengthen cap capabilities not only on the manufacturing side but also on the innovation side because the consumer is there uh, we have the manufacturing cap capability we can pick up the right insights and develop products which will help them have a bit, live a better life so these are the two key priorities sure mr basin from your side sir we have to uh, we have the information available everywhere but we have to have the transformation we will have to change ourselves nobody will else come and uh, change ourselves so we will have to change ourselves and the second thing is that we have to learn from japan on the quality there was a quote that practice make things permanent uh, uh, perfect practice make things permanent it is only the proper practice which makes things perfect so we should have the attitude of making the proper thing that is uh, then, then only the world will see us as a good manufacturer otherwise they will uh, understand us as a large scale manufacturer but not a quality, quality manufacturer rajiv ji yeah so uh, if i am given a choice to pick up two very important things which are required i would say uh, first most important is that uh, manufacturers here in india india should get priority in selling the products across the projects which are coming up so that the policies like pma or uh, there is a new policy from dipp they should get very strongly implemented mm -hmm. they should also be extended to state level where if a uh, state uh, let's say they should promote uh, make in india they should also promote that if things are being manufactured in their states yeah. additional incentives are given to those people so that's the way to catch them this is point number 1 second point which i feel is very important is on tax holiday uh, we used to have 200% benefit given to industries who are investing in r&d which was reduced to 150% uh, in last to last budget and now there is a news that it will come down to 100% i think we need to really very strongly emphasize that r&d is very important for the country and these tax benefits are very important for the companies who are investing in these uh, projects here so that uh, those benefits should be increased instead of reducing it so these are the two points i want to thanks rajiv since rajiv has already touched upon uh, a tax incentive for manufacturing from india uh, let me touch upon two very critical areas so one is ease of business and then the other is incentivizing export based uh, uh, manufacturing so in ease of business there are two areas right so in ease of business the top priority is on time government payments uh, which i actually look towards you to play a big role in pushing our uh, all our cases out here uh, the other aspect is uh, emsips how can we procedurally operationally just make it so much easier because the government is standing there with us wanting to make this happen so it's just a matter of just shifting the uh, you know easing the process and procedures a bit so that's as far as ease of business is concerned on export based um, uh, one is uh, if we incentivize exports at this given point in time again this five years become very critical india should have the confidence of capturing markets uh, across so we become a part of the global value chain we become we actually capture global markets with incentives currently it is four it should go to six or eight it depends on how hard we want to push on exports the other aspect is uh, uh, and i just want to uh, you know compliment rajiv for touching upon in taxation in a completely different way in when it comes to five years we've got to push very hard to get a tax holiday so that we actually become an established manufacturing brand 
to the world, very similar to software. And we can do it because now the pieces are actually coming together. So we can manage scale, we can manage markets, we can get skilling in place with all the initiatives that is done. A tax holiday at this time will give us a lot of value. Thanks, thanks, Fatih. Mr. Ramachandran. Yeah, I think just a couple of points to add on. Uh, number one was, you know, you talked about uh, skill development. And I think skill development, from our experience, we have seen how one large mobile manufacturer who is operating in our park went from zero to 15,000 employees in less than a year. And today does about uh, one phone a day. One phone a second, I'm so sorry. <laughs> one, phone a, one mobile phone a second is what they produce today. And uh, with 15,000 employees, 90% of them, of them women, they've scaled up in a matter of six to nine months. You know, that's the speed and that's because of, you know, we had skill development centers being set up, we had training centers set up. So there is a level of, uh, you know, the commitment from the company as well as from us. That was point number one. The other second point that I wanted to also touch upon was, uh, you know, it wasn't talked about here, but it was about infrastructure. You see, uh, today cost of power becomes critical in this sector and, uh, you know, I've seen, uh, you know, incentives from government, etc., on power, water, etc., can bring down the cost quite dramatically, and also availability of power. And third, like she mentioned about MSIPs, uh, MSIPs also have to be continued. It's not only procedure, but I'm told that maybe MSIPs may stop after some time. So the, they have to be continued so that, you know, industry has that confidence that will be available in the years to come. Thanks. Thanks. Thanks, Mr. Ramachandran. Uh, thank you so much, uh, everyone. I'm sorry, uh, I'll not be able to open the, uh, uh, the, the question session because of the time. But uh, with the permission of the panelists, if, if any one of you have any questions, probably right now, or you would want to? Uh, one. OK. OK, I think. Uh, so we can take two questions, one from you and one from sir at the back. And after that, I think we close this session. And after that, if there are any questions, I think if, if the panel is OK, we can, we can have those questions offline here. Yeah? My question to Anurag, you only. Yeah. Uh, you are working with so many industries. Uh, uh, we all are talking about uh, ease of doing business here. Mm -hmm. And one of the thing is getting that business itself. Mm -hmm. Many government projects uh, are being done as uh, Rajiv also talked about. And the thing is that they all are budgeted uh, and then industry bid in those tenders and then actuals are compared with budgets. Mm -hmm. These actuals are because budgets were made so much earlier in the time, these actuals are never up to the budget. And it takes so much time in awarding and taking decision for those projects. What's your view to solve this problem and have you experienced this first in, in your uh, work with industry? Because we have experienced this uh, uh, too many times. And so, and what's your suggestion, solution to the government or to the industry? Okay, so, so uh, I would not say that uh, I, I'm making a suggestion to the government right now in this forum. So, though that's my job to do, uh, when I'm working with my clients. But I think, yes, the point is valid. Uh, we do face uh, similar situations and, and everyone in the room would know that, yes, some similar situations are there. What I would say is that uh, there are ways and I think government is doing its bit uh, to a great extent now to take care of some of such issues. Uh, how do we do the project planning in the start? How do we do the budgeting in the start? And I know that projects they are, which are conceived today because we work on lots of infrastructure projects also and the, the time duration that it takes to complete the project with all approvals and all, things do become obsolete at time, if I can say so. So I think lots of mechanisms are already in place. Government budgets are also, I would say, they undergo changes over a period of time for the same project. Yes, I think what we need to work a bit more on the speed at which some of these things are done. And I'm not talking about the execution speed of the project, that they may take their own time, so not on that. But the way things get revalidated within the government systems, it's not, it is not the case that the budgets do not get revalidated so year on year. So all those procedures, I would say, are very strongly built in government. It's just that over a period of time now, and, and I think we have seen lots of improvement over the last few years, and I think those improvements will, will keep happening. So I, I, yes, it does take some amount of time. It does take some amount of time to make the uh, results visible to the, to the outside world. But I would say that, yes, things are happening and, and they are happening uh, for good. Yeah. Sir, last question from uh. Uh, 
I am Anup Bose. I am a Senior Advocate, Supreme Court of India. I am also an advisor to Tata Sons and a special advisor to Tata Consultancy Services. Our most dynamic Prime Minister, Narendra Modi ji. And Modi, I say, is, means mode or method of developing India, has very valiantly launched this Make in India campaign, which is yielding amazing results. And our Commerce Minister, some time back, when addressing this gathering uh, in his video address, talked about integration between global economies and the Indian economy. Here I would like to launch another concept and I'd like your views on that. The concept of make for India, we've not talked about this. Like a company like Philips could make for India in Eindhoven, they may also wish to manufacture for India in some African country. Where everything is not done here, where you manufacture or make for India may not be on Indian soil and where products are tailor-made for the Indian market. Even Havels could have something outside India and bring back something here. Where it promotes the foreign economy, it also promotes the Indian economy and brings about the integration of the global economies with the Indian economy. That's what the minister talked about. Thank you very much. Right, sir. Yeah. Swati, you, Rajiv, or Swati, you want to talk about it? Sir, thank you for the very well articulated uh, statement and uh, also let me actually comment on that. Um, we as a country have a great opportunity right now. So manufacturing for India, manufacturing from India to the globe is something that we all must concentrate on because it will translate into skill, it will translate into economy and value. And naturally when we become a part of the global value chain, uh, make for India where there are companies that are coming in uh, to uh, utilize India's consumption is any way happening. That's, that's the huge imbalance right now. So to your point, people are making uh, or are they attempting to uh, recognize this market and make for India from outside. But this market is so huge that we as Indian manufacturers should also concentrate on, on capturing um, solutions for the country and also marketing it out to the world. This opportunity is five years and we can do a lot. So with your support and blessings of the audience, I think we can get there. Can I just add one point here, Anurag? Just one more point. Very small point. So like uh, just to add to Swati to your answer. Uh, so like 20 years back or even 40 years back, we saw Japan doing and focusing on manufacturing for the world. Then we saw China manufacturing for the world, right? I think now is the time for India to manufacture for the world. We have seen uh, like from our independence till today, people are manufacturing somewhere and bringing products here. I think it's time to change. This is my suggestion. Think, yeah. oh, well, thank you. In the interest of time, I'm afraid we'll have to wrap it up here, this session. Thank you very much to all of our panelists. Can we all have a round of applause to thank each one of them here? And uh, uh, I'll request all of you to stay back for a group photograph.